All right, Ante. Now this is my main man, Pretty Tony. What they call him? Now, Tony, I ain't seen you since I left DC. Of course, we talk all the time, check in on each other. You popped in on my radio show, which you know I always appreciate. But look, man, yep. catch me up because you know I left the Wizards, came up here, and covered a champion. <laughs> Slight flex right there. <laughs> I had to do it, Tone. I had to do it, but you know, I, I, hear, you. I hear you flexing. I see you. <laughs> I had to do it, but at the same time, you know, when I left there, Bradley Beal was literally running the team. He was running the franchise. They was doing whatever they wanted to do to try and make him happy. He gets traded to Phoenix. We know the end of that story. Catch me up because. I mean, I look up, and this is the worst team in the league. I know the the Pistons had it, but I feel like the Wizards, in my opinion, were the worst team in the league. What the hell happened, Tony, since I've been gone? Then we'll get into this season. I'm sorry. I lost you there, Travis. I heard I lost you. I lost everything after you said, this is the worst team. I lost <laughs> everything after that. <laughs> you cut out, man. That, that was it. Catch me up on that how they became it. the worst. Because when, when I was there, Bill was running the show. He gets traded. Yeah. They become the worst. What the hell did I miss, Tone? Well, what happened was once they decided that, okay, we're not going to be very good, and we, we owe Bradley Bill a ton of money, for what he's done and, and the, you know, the, the, the player that he is, but we're not going to win. So the owner, Terry Leons, has decided that, you know, it's time for a rebuild. They traded Brad. Brad was at a point after, you know, being a, a solid NBA veteran, all-star, the whole nine, all the accolades that go with being a great player in the league. He decided that he wanted to be in a better situation that would give him a chance to win and, and compete for a championship. So he ultimately uh, the two sides came together. Brad uh, had a destination in mind that he wanted to be traded to, and that just happened to be Phoenix. So he wanted an opportunity to play with KD and, and Devin Booker. And obviously for the team, uh, being in a luxury tax situation, a very high luxury tax situation, uh, Ted Leons has made a business move to reduce the salary cap because clearly you're not going to the playoffs and you don't look like you're going to be winning games uh, on a high level anytime soon and so the trade was made to send bradley bill uh to the phoenix suns for some draft picks and, and future acquisitions and so now what we're what we have now is a team that drafted three players uh in the first round this year uh three young players none of which are more than 20 years old mm. they got the second pick in the draft they got the 14th pick in the draft and they got the 24th pick in the draft uh, second pick in the draft is, is Alex Saar, uh, mm -hmm. who is out of France, seven-footer, a lot of uh, potential versatility, particularly on the defensive end, has recently shown the ability to, to also shoot the three ball. Uh, one of these new age post players, guys that can that are seven feet that can stretch the floor. So uh, clearly they're expecting great things from him in the future. Uh, their 14th pick is a guy named Bug Carrington uh, from – Baltimore, who is a 6'5 combo guard who can basically do it all. Great defender, great scorer, that what I call Baltimore tough kind of edge to him. Plays with a lot of grit on both ends of the floor. Very versatile. Uh, um, is really good at both positions. I wouldn't call him an off guard, and I wouldn't call him a point guard. I'd call him a combo because that's what he is. He has the ability to play both those uh, positions very well. And then uh, with the 24th pick in the draft, uh, they got Keyshawn George, who is another 19-year-old uh, who uh, played one year of college basketball and, and is coming to this league as a guy who exhibits a lot of versatility as a 6'7 wing player who has point guard skills and also has a pretty good three ball and, and not super athletic, but very crafty. And, and so these three guys have a lot of potential, and obviously the Wizards have made a commitment to building for the future. Hey, I heard enough. A dude named Bub from Baltimore, I know he can ball. I don't even need to know anything about him other than that, Tone. I mean, there you go. it's it's obvious the Wizards are in a rebuild. They've, they've completely committed to the youth movement here. Um, what are your thoughts of the offseason? I, I mean, clearly, uh, they're letting all the young players play and develop, and, and we'll see what sticks for the future. 
But how do you sort of grade it? Were you, were you happy with the offseason? Are you happy with this youth movement direction that this franchise is going in? I am. I'm happy with the youth movement. I thought the three draft picks, they used them very well. I think they addressed uh, the needs that the team uh, was looking at when you're talking about the improved shooting. All three of these guys can shoot the basketball. Um, to me, Alex Saar has potential to be a great shot blocker in this league. He sh he's shown that already. He's very athletic as a seven-footer, moves side to side extremely well. He's like to say, slides the puppies, can, can guard the four position. Um, and, and again, on the offensive end, He's a guy that can stretch the floor uh, and and draw bigger centers away from the basket. And he can also put the ball on the floor and drive. So he's shown the ability to uh, to be good in fast break situations as a guy that 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 can run the floor, that can also defend, the uh, provide some rim protection, which is something they sorely needed from last year's team. They ranked at the bottom of the league in rim protection because they, they didn't have a lot of shot blockers. So he addresses that. When you look at uh, Bud Carrington and, and Keontae George, these are dynamic wing players. And and now with the other acquisitions of veterans, when you look at uh, Valanchonis, who was also acquired by the Wizards, and, and a guy like Malcolm Brogdon, who unfortunately just had a wrist injury, is going to be out for a significant amount of time. But his presence with these young guys is really going to help them develop a little bit quicker. So... I think when you look at the mix of veterans that they brought in, along with the young draft picks that I think will develop into great NBA players in a couple of years, I think the Wizards definitely made the right moves this summer and and, and should be uh, in contention as far as playoffs and, and being a team that should be good, I would think, in the next three, maybe three years. It may take three years to get there. Yeah, you talked about those young guys, but the guys people really want to hear about. I appreciate that because I want to know like what's going on with these young guys. I was already going to ask you about Alex R. Above character. I love the draft fix, but the people yeah. around the world, around the NBA scope, are worried about two guys: Jordan Poole and Kyle Kuzma. I got to ask you the tough questions. Can we expect a bounce back year from Jordan Poole? And do we expect Kyle Kuzma to even be a part of this Washington Wizards team when the season ends? Well, you never know uh, what's going to happen as far as, you know, when you talk about guys like Kyle Kuzma and being in a situation where obviously he's not winning a lot of games right now and the team is in a full-on rebuild. And so, uh, you know, he could potentially get to where Bradley Beal got to in the way of, okay, I'm a veteran player. You know, you can't play in this league forever, and I want to be in a winning situation and have a chance to contend for a championship. So um, I don't know if Kuzma's going to ask for a trade down the road, but he hasn't made any mention of that um, so far. Um, I think when you look at Jordan Poole, I think last year, the end of last season where, um, where, where, where Coach Keith essentially took over uh, for West Huntsville Jr. And, and really sort of started to play Jordan Poole in a as a, a point guard and a guy who was essentially uh, coming in and basically – leading the team and, uh, you, you know, from a shot-taking standpoint. I mean, Kuz led the team in points, but Jordan is an integral part of the Wizards' offense, and we saw him once being moved to the point guard position with the ball in his hands a little bit more. He's able to create, um, which is his strong suit. That's what he does offensively. He's not a, necessarily a catch-and-shoot guy uh, as a wizard, but he has to be a guy who can initiate the offense and find ways to get other guys involved while at the same time maintaining his scoring prowess. And so we saw him uh, toward the end of last year basically embracing that role of, of, of being the guy who has the ball in his hands and is responsible for getting others involved and picking his spots to score uh, because that's something that he does well. <laughs> so if he can pick up from where he left off uh, last year being more of a leader being more of an offensive facilitator and, and, and basically sh showing that leadership that he was brought here to show as a guy that came out of a championship situation with the Golden State Warriors. And I think he's on track to have a more consistent year this year than he did last year. All right, so that's Poole and Kuzma, the two big names. I want to go back to the youngsters for a second. From what you've seen yep. so far and you sort of can assess – 
Who will have a bigger impact sooner, Saar or Carrington? Because it sounds like you really like both. Who do you think will have a bigger impact this season? Well, I'm going to go with Saar because I think he'll get more of an opportunity um, than than Carrington will. I think when I look at Saar right now, he can be effective on the defensive side of the basketball. But these last couple of preseason games, he's really shown the ability on the offensive side to shoot the three and, and, and to be pretty good in the mid-range area. He's not a traditional post player. Um, he's going to have to improve his back-to-the-basket game and, and, and get a little stronger down there physically, uh, which – you know, at 19 years old, you would expect that from him to, to come into the league and obviously have to get stronger as most guys do. And and so as he continues to improve as a post player, while hopefully adding some more things to his game on the offensive side, he's already shown the ability that, that he can score uh, in this league uh, with, with, you know, with NBA players. And so I think with that, combined with the fact that he also has to be a better rebounder, if there's an area that he really needs to improve on for me i think it would be rebounding he has to figure out a way to be a very effective rebounder when you're talking about being seven feet tall having a 36 inch vertical seven foot four wingspan um which is what he has and, and so he's got to utilize those physical and tangible go ahead tay yeah, that you know, is Sar is definitely going to be a great player for this team. I've seen it early on in summer league. I was a little nervous, but as I've been able to watch him throughout the preseason and summer league on forward, I thought he's been great. I want to know, other than these young guys, other than the stars, what are the key role players to this team being successful? Mm. Well, when you look at the veterans, obviously the, the Malcolm Brogdon thing is a, is a big loss for me. Um, you, you know, he's one of the better defenders in this league. He's a guy that's also been consistent offensively. Um, his leadership, I think, is something that the Wizards will sorely miss on the floor. Um, I like the fact that he'll be able to tutor these young guys a little bit, you know, off the court and, and teach them how to be professionals on and off the court. Uh, but when I look at Valanchonis, I, I think he is a guy, and again, I expect him to to start, um, obviously, because he's a big physical body. He's a presence that the Wizards have sorely missed, particularly against guys like uh, Embiid, who's obviously in the division, and, and the Wizards have to see them four times a year. And Embiid is, you know, has destroyed the Wizards traditionally every time he plays them because they physically couldn't match up with him and so with Valanciunas you got a big body now that can hopefully make him be work a little bit same thing can be said for Nikola Jokic um but outside of these two guys uh you don't really have a lot of super effective big body guys like this you know you you look around the league at some of the other guys they're taller but they're they're you know usually slender build and so uh I look at these two in particular to really help these young guys I think when you look at the role players Corey Kispert is a guy that, you know, the best shooter on the team. I expect him to pick up from where he left off. Um, I really like the improvement that I've seen in Bilal Koulibaly, uh, particularly with the experience he got in playing with the French national team this year with the Olympics. And so, uh, you know, there are other guys. You know, uh, Marvin Bagley had a great year last year, was essentially a walking double-double. He's going to be a guy that's going to be coming in off the bench and hopefully bringing that energy and, and particularly around the basket and, and able to score without having plays run for him. So, um, you know, these guys, I think, you know, along with some of the other veterans on the team, I, I think will be guys that can really fill the void and, and, and hopefully, you know, increase that learning curve for the rookies because I expect these rookies to play. And, um, you know, and I look at Cal Kuzma and, and Jordan, uh, Jordan to be the guys to really – lead this team and provide that leadership and help guide these young players into hopefully becoming great players in this league.